So I've talked about really modifying the Switch, how the hacking group has pretty much taken that over and they're attempting their at least their best to start modifying the Switch and do all kinds of stuff with it, homebrew, and I'm sure, as we all know, eventually that'll lead to running retail games and then probably overclocking it, unlocking some of the system's abilities that maybe were locked behind certain things. And now it looks like the PS3 has actually received some news in the same scene. Now, I don't mind talking as much about the PS3 because it's pretty much considered legacy to Sony at this point. Uh, they, they, You can't really go buy one at the stores, at least at the Walmart, Target, any of those places I go to. You can't really buy one new. And, of course, they're not releasing really any games on it anymore. And, to me, that means Sony has moved on from it. So, if it gets modified, if it gets hacked, I don't think they'd care as much unless it starts affecting their network in some way. So, they may see this as we gotta patch that. They may not. It, you know, it's, it's interesting. However, they probably would still ban you, just so you know, if you decide to do this. But what's interesting here now... The PS3, for a while, you would have to uh, do hardware modifications to downgrade the firmware to 3.55. It was something I've done before uh, with uh, with a couple different PS3s because, believe it or not, um, when there was the red screen of death, which I'm sure some of you have probably seen at some point, it's where when you turn it on, it, it's pretty much bricked. It just goes to a red screen and it won't start up. One of the ways to fix that was to clear, I think it was dirty sectors on the NOR, or basically in the firmware. So the way you do that is you downgrade it, you load custom firmware, you would run a, basically a, a, a piece of homebrew, essentially, that would then fix it, and then you would take the custom firmware off, put it back to official firmware, and that would at least give you a chance at fixing the firmware issue. That was something we would have to do in the repair days. We'd actually have to load custom firmware to fix the red screen of death. However, a lot of people use custom firmware for things like, of course, modifying games and playing retail games. It was That was an issue for a while. And running PS2 backwards compatibility on any PS3, yeah, that, that's right, you can do that if it's modified. You can also run emulators, ROMs, you can load any kind of homebrew, stuff like that. And now, you don't need hardware. Before, I'd have to take the PS3 apart, I'd have to use an E3 flasher on the NOR to then inject code to let it downgrade. It's all software now, and this actually happened, like, over the past day. It, this just happened. I know it's crazy because the PS3 is pretty old, but they just figured it out. And this is my favorite part. Guess how they're hacking the PS3. Just take a guess. What have we talked about over the past few weeks with the, the Switch? How they are really tapping into the Switch and getting uh, higher level access to the system. Through the web browser, they're actually using WebKit in this case with the PS3 to take over and install code that lets you run custom firmware on it. Yeah, they're, so they're tapping in to the web browser. It's kind of funny. But what happened here was a user, uh, you can read all about this. This is actually pretty cool. I'm going to leave a link to a place you can go. I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but uh, not in detail anyway. I'll give you a bit of a rundown. But if you want to really check this out and research it, uh, you can go over to psxplace.com. I'll leave a link for that in the description so you can do all your research yourself. Check it out. Um, it's an interesting place anyway. They talk about all kinds of stuff there. It's it's kind of cool. But uh, what happened was there, there was a user who was researching WebKit on the PS3 and they kind of stumbled across what could be exploited to run higher level code. Basically, they would gain root access. After finding this out, they decided to talk to some other people, and they came up with pretty much a group name. It's, it's, it's a WebKit exploit they came up with called PS3 Exploit, with no E. It's just X and then ploit. <laughs> uh, but they, they took a look at that. They realized they could do this even with the newest firmware. So despite not being on 355, which has been a big issue for a while for people who want to modify their PS3, uh, you can be on as, as, as much as 4.82, the newest firmware at this time of this recording. You can be on that, and you can still load custom firmware. In fact, they recommend you're on that one right now. Even if you're on, like, a custom firmware, they even say just, just get on the latest firmware you can, 4.82, and you can install it. So what you do, according to these steps that they have outlined, it's very interesting. They actually want you to set up a web server. You can do it with your phone or your PC, and then you essentially, using the web browser, you go to your, essentially, your server. It's kind of interesting. Like, you go to your server, and then using a USB stick, uh, you actually install everything that way. It takes over the web browser, it installs it, and then you can load your firmware. It's kind of cool. I would, like I said, I'll leave a link for you guys if you want to read through it. This is just a, a really cool step in, in the in the hacking scene, I guess you'd say. 
don't mind it. It's a legacy on the PS3. I really don't care as much. Don't go online with it. You'll probably get banned. I'll say that now. Uh, use it for things like homebrew. Use it for things like emulators if you want. Uh, you, I guess people are going to load retail games. I, I don't know. A lot of people, it's very popular with Grand Theft Auto. I'll say that. Um, but it's kind of neat to see. Uh, it's a discovery that was made. Like this was so popular years ago. It's kind of fallen out now because everyone's moved on to the PS4. But you never know what can happen. This is really neat. So something people thought was impossible now becomes possible. And it's using WebKit. So Nintendo, if you're if you're seeing this, you, you, you want to be careful with your web browser if you ever decide to put one on the Switch because uh, people are going to be scrutinizing WebKit in that web browser a lot right now, especially after finding that you can do it even with the PS3. Something was thought to be impossible because Sony did such a good job patching that. And here it is. People are loading custom firmware on the PS3 without opening it. It's all software. Thanks, guys, for watching. Let me know what you think about this latest breakthrough in the hacking scene with the PS3 system. It's available now, but I will say this. If you have a slim PS3 that is a 3,000 or more, uh, or you have a super slim, one of the ones that slides, uh, you can't use this yet. They're working on it, but at this time, it would actually brick your system. But that is something that they are taking under consideration, and they're trying to figure it out. Let me know what you guys think about this whole situation. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button, and make sure you subscribe for more gaming news, all this stuff. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.